guys, my name is Kim aka Geekerella and today we're going to be talking about Shade the Changing Girl issue number 9. Now DC Comics has sent me a free copy of this book to review for you guys here on the DC Fans channel. This issue was about going back in time and reminiscing your past. And it all revolved around Shade's undying love for the old sitcom Life with Honey. Now this was kind of like a 40s, 50s sitcom so it was all in black and white and obviously it happened a long time ago. But Shade or Loma doesn't really understand how time works on Earth and doesn't realise that it is now decades later. So the last issue of Shade the Changing Girl left us with Shade exploring Gotham which is literally the perfect city for her to fit in with all the madness sprouting around her. So in the last issue she caught a glimpse of a band playing up on one of the theatre signs that said the Sonic Booms. Now this was an older band which actually debuted in her favourite sitcom Life with Honey. So obviously being in love with the band and actually recognising it there on the street she drove straight into the theatre ready to see them in their prime, what they looked like and what she'd seen on the reruns of Life with Honey. But it's obviously not the full 40s, 50s anymore and when she goes into the theatre she can see that everyone there in the concert is basically old. They're like 50 to 80 years old and she doesn't understand what's going on. And then when the band comes on the stage they're all old. She can't understand what is happening. Where is the sonic booms that she remembered from Life with Honey? So she decides to let a little bit of madness out yet again and creates chaos in the theatre. Everybody is turned younger. The sonic booms are turned younger. All of the fans there are younger. Everyone's feeling their teenage years again. And Shay is really loving it because she can now see the sonic booms in their prime and what she remembered them as on the sitcom. But obviously changing a bunch of old people back into their young teenage selves has a little bit of problems. Shade ends up getting arrested with some of the friends that she made at the concert. And though they were so excited to be young again, being arrested and kind of pulled back into reality, they decided we kind of don't want to be young anymore. We don't want to do this whole teenage thing again. It's reckless and it's just not something they think they can cope with. So Shade turns them back to old people and they all go on their way. And I think by this time Shade is a little bit bored of Gotham. I mean how can you get bored of Gotham? But she was. So she decided she needed to go somewhere else. So a piece this is probably the most insane part of the comic for, for, for this issue. A piece of madness opens up into a hole. She dives into it and is basically sucked through the core of the earth. She's like being stretched and elongated. Like I'm literally talking like a scene from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy when they press like that button and it goes insane and everyone's turned into like 2D, 3D, weird, crazy characters. That, that is what was happening. She finally gets pulled up through the ground and she's in Los Alamos. And who is sitting on the sign? None other than Honey Rich, the star of her favourite 50 sitcom that this whole comic has been about. That's right, Honey Rich has appeared before her, acting as some sort of tour guide. Meanwhile, other things are happening in this comic. Back in Valleyville, we've got River and Teacup trying to find Shade. River gets this amazing idea that she, because Shade leaves pieces of madness all over, maybe they can communicate to her through these pieces of madness and maybe eventually follow it like a set of breadcrumbs. And back on Meta, the scientists are still torturing Lepak and getting nowhere. They've kind of pinpointed her location on planet Earth, but they still don't know exactly where she is. So I think Shade has a fight brewing on the horizon. These scientists from Meta are for sure going to come to Earth and try rip the madness vest off her and everything will be absolute chaos. Well, it's already kind of chaos because it's the madness vest, but it will be like action chaos with all the fighting and I'm very very excited to see oh, what happens. So that is everything that happened in this issue of Shade the Changing Girl. If you guys are not reading Shade you absolutely have to, you have to catch up. But this comic is beautifully drawn, there's so many amazing colours because of the madness. All the art is literally just blurted across the pages, there's so much colours, it's absolutely stunning. Let me know what you guys thought of Shade the Changing Girl issue number 9 in the comments below and I will see you next month when Shade the Changing Girl issue number 10 comes out. As always guys thank you so so much for watching and I will see you very very soon. Goodbye.